Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out my collection of Ceriskian dinosaurs from Jurassic World. And if you didn't know, Ceriskian means lizard-hipped dinosaurs. Let's start it off with this massive stomp and escape T-Rex. This dinosaur comes with this cage that you put on its face, and then by pressing the button on the back, it breaks free. This next T-Rex is the Battle Damage Edition from Jurassic World Dominion. This features a poseable head and jaw, as well as the arms, legs, and tail. And best of all, it's got the battle damage that you can turn on and off. Next, we've got a giant Spinosaurus figure from Camp Cretaceous. This figure is in the classic brown color with the red on the face and on the spine. And it features poseable arms, legs, and a tail. And there's a button at the top of its jaw for chomping and roaring. Up next in this collection, we've got a giant Giganotosaurus figure. This figure features poseable arms and legs. And best of all, it has two action buttons. One to swing its torso around and one button for jaw chomping action. This next dinosaur is not a real life dinosaur, but I think it would fall into that category of dinosaurs. This is the Indominus Rex Battle Damage Edition. It has poseable arms and legs, plus a chomping action for its jaw. I've still got a few more T-Rex figures in here. This one is an older figure and it was also custom colored camo green. It features poseable arms, legs. It's also got a button on its foot for some stomping sound effects. And best of all, you can use the tail to activate a chomping action or a roaring action. And here is another massive T-Rex figure, but this one's quite special. This is the Hammond Edition Tyrannosaurus Rex. It features an extremely poseable body. You can bend basically every limb like you would be able to in real life. And my favorite part is it's got some marbled eyes. The next Ceriskian dinosaur that I've got is this Mega Raptor from Jurassic World Dominion. It features poseable arms and legs, and it has a chomping action when you press down on the body. Also from Jurassic World Dominion is this Atrociraptor figure. This basic figure features poseable arms, legs, and a tail, but sadly it doesn't have any attack buttons. This next figure I got is one that I bought quite recently. This is the Hammond Collection Concavenator. Just like the T-Rex that we saw earlier, it features a very poseable body. You can basically adjust any limb that it would be able to move in real life. Plus, this is just one crazy looking dinosaur species. Next, why don't we open up these brand new ones that I bought just for this video. This is the Jurassic World Heroes of Gujitsu, and this is the Giganotosaurus figure. Wow, it is extremely squishy and very rubbery. It looks pretty close to a Giganotosaurus. It's got the green coloring with the spike running along its back and on the top of its head. And its whole body is this super squishy rubber, but its head is a hard plastic that you can actually have a chomping action with. But let's check out the biggest feature, which is the squishiness. Let's see if there's anything on the inside of it when you squish it. So there's some type of liquid and some beads in there too. You can kind of see them right there. There's a bunch of little plastic beads and some type of green gooey liquid. It is extremely squishy and uh, pretty relaxing actually. Now because it's so soft and squishy, it won't be able to stand on its own. It'll fall over but this is a pretty cool, relaxing toy. Now let's check out the Heroes of Gujitsu Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic World. All right, this one is quite a bit different. It's actually noticeably heavier. This one also has the soft rubber body, but the hard plastic head with that chomping action. And in this figure, instead of having some liquid and those plastic beads like the Giganotosaurus, this one is a really tough rubber that I think you can stretch super far. Check that out. And then it'll just snap right back into place slowly. But oh, check that out. Looks like there's actually something inside of the T-Rex. Looks like there's a ton of bones, and I don't know what that black thing is. Is that a bug or something? That's really weird. So it seems like this one is meant to be stretched instead of squished, and it can stretch really far. Look at that. Overall, pretty cool, and still quite relaxing to play with. Now let's keep digging through our Ceriskian collection here. Next up is this giant Carnotaurus figure. This figure from Jurassic World features poseable tiny little arms and back legs, and you can use the tail to move the head around, as well as chomp the jaw. 
Here we've got our first Allosaurus of this collection. This dinosaur figure features posable front arms, legs, and tail. It's got some cool little spikes running down its back all the way to its tail. And its biggest feature is this slide lever action for the sound effects and chomping. <laughs> Here is another Allosaurus figure, but I think that this one is actually a bit older than the one that we just saw. This one features posable arms and legs, and instead of a slide lever action on its back, it has one single button for chomping. Over here is our first Pyroraptor of the collection. This figure is from Jurassic World Dominion and is the basic edition, so there is no chomping action, but the arms, the legs, and the tail are posable. Next up, we've got a big old Carcharodontosaurus figure. This dinosaur figure features some bright coloring along its face, running down its back. This dinosaur also has some pretty cool spikes coming down its back all the way to the tail. And it features posable arms, legs, and a tail, and it has one button on its back for a chomping action. This is another Velociraptor figure. It's just as big as the Pyroraptor and is also a basic edition, so there is no chomping action, but the arms, the legs, and the tail are posable. Here's what I think is a really cool looking dinosaur figure. This is a Suchomimus figure. It features some bright coloring and a spine that runs all the way from its head down to its tail, and it has posable arms, legs, and a tail, plus there is one action button on its back for a chomping action. Next up is the Yang Chuanasaurus figure. This is a pretty recent one, I believe from Jurassic World Dominion, and it features posable arms, legs, and the tail actually controls the entire torso, so you can swing its head back and forth and chomp its jaw. This next dinosaur is one of the newest that I have. I think it might be from the new Dino Tracker series, and I believe it's called an Eocarcharia. It features some feather texturing all over its body. It has posable arms, legs, and a tail. And like many of the newest dinosaurs that Jurassic World is releasing, it has this lever that you swing back and forth for a chomping action. <laughs> Up next is a Battle Damage Baryonyx figure. You can see some of the battle damage on its neck and on its leg, and it has posable arms and legs and one single button on its back for chomping. Here is another Baryonyx figure. This one is a bit more recent. It also has posable arms and legs and the tail as well, and there is the slide lever action right at the top of its back for a bunch of sound effects and chomping motions. <laughs> Next up, we've got a classic Ceratosaurus figure. I believe that this figure is from Camp Cretaceous and it features posable arms, legs, and a tail, and a single button on its back for the chomping. <laughs> this next figure is a miniature Spinosaurus figure. Unlike the Camp Cretaceous version that we saw earlier, this one has dark green coloring, but it still has the red on its face and on its spine. And since it's a basic figure, there is no chomping action, but the arms, the legs, and the tail are poseable. <laughs> Here we've got the crazy looking Scorpio Venator figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This features tiny poseable front arms and back legs and a chomping action when you press down on its back. Here is one more Baryonyx figure. This one has similar coloring to the last one that we saw, but instead of a slide lever action, it has one button on its back for chomping. Next up is not a dinosaur, but it is Kenji from Camp Cretaceous. They're riding around in this motorized sphere that I'm sure you recognize from the shows, and you can even open it up to put in different characters too. Here is a miniature Carnotaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It features posable arms, legs, tail, neck, and face, and it's got the iconic broken horn at the top of its head. I've also got some smaller Velociraptor figures in here. This first one is a Battle Damage Edition. You can open and close the Battle Damage right on its side. I also have this Leaping Velociraptor figure. It is super brightly colored with the red and green stripes. And it's a Leaping Velociraptor because its legs are spring-loaded, so you can actually launch it into the air. Next up is another Battle Damage Dinosaur. This is the Atrociraptor, and it features a poseable face, neck, arms, legs, and it has the battle damage right on the side 
that you can turn on and off. Here's another Velociraptor figure, but this one is a bit special. This is from the Amber Collection. So this figure is more poseable than many of the basic and normal figures, which is pretty cool. Over here, I've got a little Velociraptor Beta figure. It features poseable arms, legs, neck and head and of course it has the iconic blue stripe running down both sides and here i think is the last velociraptor in this collection it is velociraptor blue but it is actually a snapping toy so you can press on it and it'll open up you can see its eyes and mouth and you press on its legs to close it up and it looks like it's asleep over here i've got another spinosaurus figure this is a miniature version and quite a bit older than many of my figures it features poseable arms legs and you can use the tail to move the head in a really lifelike way next is the miniature trudon figure this dinosaur features a poseable neck and mouth as well as the arms the legs and the tail look at this this is not another dinosaur this is dr ian malcolm up next is a baby T-Rex figure. It's bright green and it features poseable arms, legs, and you can use the tail for a chomping action. And finally, I've got a very small Indominus Rex figure. This one has a bright and reflective silver painting all over its back. And even though it is super small, you can still even open the mouth. Now here is the entire collection standing side by side. And I actually forgot to mention this big dinosaur right here is the Apatosaurus, which is also part of the Sauruskian dinosaur classification, as well as this huge Brachiosaurus on the other side, also part of the Sauruskian classification. Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out my huge collection of Jurassic World theropods. Theropods are two-legged dinosaurs that are typically characterized by having hollow bones and having three toes or claws on each limb. So let's get started. First up, we've got a ginormous Spinosaurus figure. This is the Camp Cretaceous Spinosaurus with the brown body and red along its spine and face. And it's got the action button on its head for the chomping and roaring. Next up, we've got the Terran T-Rex. This T-Rex has a really cool ability. And when you press down on this button, it does a tearing action. Look at that, it's like tearing away some meat. That's really cool. And it comes with a second action button to swing the tail. Next up, we've got a big old Therizinosaurus figure, just like in the Jurassic World Dominion movie. It's got the red stripe down its back all the way to the top of its head. And this figure has some special features as well. There is a button on its tail to activate the jaw and the neck. And you can use the tail to swivel the torso back and forth. Plus, check out those huge claws. Next dinosaur is the Stomp and Escape T-Rex. This figure has a light brown body with gray detailing. It has one button on the top of its back for the roaring and chomping. And the tail, when you twist it, stomps its feet. Some pretty cool sound effects that come with it too. Next up, we've got a big old Carnotaurus figure. This has a light red or orange coloring along most of its body. It's got the gray underbelly and the brown top and tons of little bumps along its back, as well as the two horns on the top of its head. And this figure has an action button for the chomping, and you can use the tail to move the head around too. Here's another T-Rex that I bought just recently. This is the new Extreme Battle Damage T-Rex. Check it out, there's a button on its back that you can use to activate the battle damage on the side. That's pretty cool. And the rest of the figure is fully posable as well. Here is another ginormous T-Rex in the back. This one is camo colored, and I believe it's custom colored. That was done a long time ago. And this figure has a few actions that you can do with the tail. You can move the tail up, and it does a roaring pose. And you can move the tail down, and it does a chomping action. 
This dinosaur is a baryonyx. It's got the light green coloring and the light brown and dark brown along the top. And it's got an action button on its back for the chomping. Right over here is an Albertosaurus. This figure is medium sized. It's got the dark green coloring along its body and that red maroon color all the way along the top of its head. And this Albertosaurus actually has the battle damage both on its leg and the battle damage that you can open and close on its side. And you can even bring the rib cage up and down to reveal the stomach inside. Here is another Baryonyx figure. This one is light gray with blue and light green coloring and a little bit of white along the side. And it has the slide lever action to activate the roaring sound effects and the jaw too. Here's another Baryonyx figure. This one has light green coloring along with some darker green along the top and on its legs and the darker brown along its neck and the top of its head too. This Baryonyx figure also has the slide lever action that you can use for the sound effects and the chomping. This is the Majingasaurus figure. It's a bit smaller. It's got the dark green coloring with the yellow and bright blue detailing along the sides. It has teeny tiny arms that are adjustable and you can use the tail to move the neck and head around. Let's see what we got next up. This is a Carcharodontosaurus figure. It has the dark blue coloring with the yellow and brown detailing along the top. The arms, legs, and tail are fully adjustable, and there's a button on its back for the chomping. Here is a Cryolophosaurus figure. This one has some really cool crowning along the top of its head in that bright orange color, while the rest of its body is yellow and brown along the top. With this figure, you can use the tail to control the head as well. Here is another Baryonyx figure. This one has some bright orange coloring right along the top of its head though. And of course, it's got the button on its back to activate the jaw. Next up, we've got a dark red Carnotaurus figure. This dinosaur has the light underbelly and some purple detailing along the top of its body. And it is very textured. You can see those bumps and ridges all over everywhere. And of course, it's got the huge horns at the top of its head, plus an action button to activate the chomping. <laughs> Next up, we've got a super bright yellow Sucomimus figure. This dinosaur has the brown detailing along the top. It's got that spine all the way from its head, all the way down, almost to the end of its tail. And this figure has two action buttons. The first is for the jaw and the chomping, and the second action button activates the tail for swinging around. This dinosaur is a Metriacanthosaurus. It's a bit smaller than the other figures. It's got the dark red coloring with some darker detailing along the top and the bright yellow orange coloring right along its head. And of course, it's got an action button on its back to activate the jaw. I've got another Sucomimus figure. This one is a dark blue color with some bright yellow detailing along the top and along that spine that goes all the way to its tail. These Sucomimuses have really long and narrow snouts, still full of teeth though, and there is an action button on its back to activate the chomping. Next up is another Carcharodontosaurus figure. This one is tan in color with the brown and orange detailing along the top and it's got all these little spikes right along its spine, running all the way down to the tail. That's pretty interesting. And this figure has an action button that activates the jaw once again. That's pretty cool. Here we've got an Allosaurus figure with the light tan coloring along the underbelly and the sides and the darker blue along the top of its back all the way to the top of its head. This figure also has the slide lever action for a bunch of different sound effects and chomping actions. Over here, we've got a big Dilophosaurus figure in the bright red coloring, along with the green, brown, and red along its frills, and that super bright yellow crown on the top of its head too. This figure is pretty basic though, so it doesn't have any action buttons, but you can still move the arms, the legs, and the tail, as well as move the frills back and forth. Here is a basic Spinosaurus figure. This one is a lot smaller than the Spinosaurus that we saw at the beginning of this video. And this one has the dark green coloring, but still has the iconic red spine and the red around the eyes as well. And on this figure, you can't open and close the jaw, but you can just move the arms, the legs, and the tail. 
Next up, we've got a huge Carnotaurus figure. This one has some darker red, basically brown coloring along the side. It has a dark gray underbelly and the black along the top. And this figure has a few actions too. The tail actually controls the head, so you can swing that around and up and down. And there's a button on the tail to activate the jaw too. Here is another Cryolophosaurus figure. This one is a dark blue color. It's got the light underbelly and some white detailing on the sides, and then a bunch of red along its back and on the crown on the top of its head too. And just like the other one that we saw, you can use the tail to control the neck. Here is the Baryonyx from the Hammond Collection. This Baryonyx is way more adjustable than a lot of figures that you'll see in here. Check that out. You can move its elbows and its arms all over on its legs. It's pretty realistic with its movement, and it's got a bit more texturing than a lot of the other Baryonyx figures that I have. Looks like we've got some mini Dilophosaurus figures in here. This first one is a soft purple color, and it's got some yellow, orange, and red on its frills. Looking pretty scary. And I've also got this soft green Dilophosaurus that's also got some orange and some yellow on it. And this one actually has an action that when you move the tail, it springs the frills up. That's really cool. Here is the Irritator figure. Most of this figure is dark brown. It's got a little bit of the light underbelly and it's got some cool dark blue and light blue detailing all along its spine all the way to the top of its head and check out that super long mouth with all those teeth all right looks like we got another giant dilophosaurus figure in here this one is green and has red frills and the red crown and just like the other one you can open and close the frills as well as move the arms legs and the tail too Next up, I believe that this is the Roarivore Allosaurus. This dinosaur is gray all along its body and has the yellow detailing right along the top of its body all the way to the tip of its head. Here is another Metriacanthosaurus figure. This one is a dark mustard yellow along most of its body and underbelly, and it's got that dark green detailing along the top of its back all the way to its head. And it has an action button on its back for chomping the jaw. We've got another Albertosaurus figure in here. This one does not have the battle damage on its side though. It's got the bright orange detailing on its side all the way up to its eyes, while the rest of its body is a dark green color. This figure has an action where you can move the tail to control the head, as well as press the button on its tail to activate the jaw too. <laughs> Check it out, another Baryonyx figure. This one has the bright reflective blue coloring on the top of its head, while the rest of its body is a soft brown color and a dark gray blue detailing along the top. And it's got the action button on its back for the jaw. <laughs> Looks like we've got a few Monolophosaurus figures in here as well. This first one is a brown color with gray detailing and it's pretty adjustable. It's a pretty small figure though. This other Monolophosaurus figure actually has some battle damage on the side that you can open and close and is fairly adjustable as well. And this final one is a dark, dark green color, has some yellow detailing and that bright red detailing and check out those green eyes too. And this figure actually has an action button. When you move the tail, it chomps its jaw open and closed. Last of all, we've got a Gallimimus figure. This dinosaur is a soft brown color and it has some darker brown striping along the top and you can move its head up and down, as well as its other limbs, too. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out a huge collection of Jurassic World Apex Predators, meaning that they are at the top of the food chain. And I've actually got a brand new Tyrannosaurus Rex from the Jurassic World Legacy Collection that we're gonna open up first. 
Here is the brand new T-Rex and the baby T-Rex. I already have one of these T-Rexes, but I think this is the first of the green T-Rex that I have. So I'm super excited to check this one out. As you can see, most of its body is a dark green color. It's got the lighter underbelly and it's got the black detailing right along the top. And it's about as adjustable as my other T-Rex figures. So you can move the ankles, you can move the legs into different positions, move the tail around, and then the neck you can also move around so it can look in different directions. And of course, there's the button at the top of its head for the chomping action. This is a really cool looking figure, and I'm sure that the T-Rex is one of the best known apex predators. Here we've got a dinosaur that you can't find in real life, but I'm sure it would be an apex predator if it was real. This is the Indominus Rex, and this is one of the big figures. You can see that it's pretty adjustable. You can move the legs into different positions, and that causes the dinosaur to look up and down. You can see it moves its neck back and forth like that. This figure also comes with the two action buttons, one for the chomping, and then one on the back for the slashing action. This is another T-Rex. This one is mostly brown. It's got the dark brown on the top, lighter brown on the sides, and then a tan on the bottom. And this T-Rex figure has a tearing action, actually. So when you press this button on its back, it tears just like that. And there's also a second action button that swings the tail back and forth. Here is a Carcharodontosaurus with blue coloring on its body and the orange and brown detailing on the top. This also has one action button for chomping. Plus you can adjust the arms and the legs and the tail as well. Next up, we've got two Endoraptors. And obviously these dinosaurs aren't from real life, but if they were, I can guarantee you that they would be an apex predator. I just remember them from the Jurassic World movie. These were some of the most feared dinosaurs. This first Endoraptor is a more basic figure. You can only move the arms, the legs, and the tail, but you can adjust the neck or open and close the mouth. But on this second Endoraptor figure, this one is super adjustable. It's got a bunch of points of articulation. Again, it's a double jointed tail. You can bend the knees, you can bend the ankles, you can adjust the arms fully, and you can open and close the mouth too. Right over here, we've got two Sucomimuses. This one is a blue with yellow detailing, and this one is yellow with brown detailing on the top. This one has two action buttons, one for chomping and one for the tail. This Sucomimus only has one action button that activates the jaw. Right up top here, we've got a smaller figure, but still a fearsome predator. This is a Baryonyx. It's got the green sides and belly and the brown top. The arms and legs can articulate and move around, and there's an action button on its back for chomping. Back here, actually, we've got another Baryonyx. This one has a brown body and sides with a dark gray-blue coloring on the top and the bright orange detailing right on the top of its face. And just like the other figure, the legs and the arms can move too. Here is an older Jurassic World figure. You can see that this is another T-Rex. It's got the full tan body, and on its head it's got some gray detailing. It's got those yellow eyes and an action button on its back to activate the jaw. Here we've got a newer figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. This is a Yang Chuanosaurus. It's got the green body, a lighter yellow underbelly. It's got some brown detailing along the top and then that bright orange piece right on its head. This figure is pretty adjustable with its arms and its legs. You can see that moving the legs dips its head down like that. And the tail controls the jaw and can move the neck around too. Back here is another newer figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. This is a Scorpio Venator. This figure has an orange belly and sides. It's got some white detailing right along the top and a dark gray blue color right along the top of its head. This figure is fairly adjustable. You can move the arms and the legs. And when you push down on its legs, it does a chomping action. This one is another T-Rex. This T-Rex though is the battle damage edition. It's got the button on top that you can use to turn on and off the battle damage, which is a pretty awesome feature. This figure is pretty adjustable too. You can move the ankles, you can move the legs up and down. The tail only has one joint in it though, but the neck of this T-Rex is really adjustable. You can have them look in all directions and you can open and close its mouth really easily. 
This is a Carnotaurus figure. It's got the clay red body with the darker detailing spots on the sides and the brown right along the top. You can see that the Carnotaurus has a lot of bumps and ridges in that spine right there as well. And with this figure, the tail controls the head and there's a button as well to open and close its mouth. Here's another newer figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. And I think this is one of my favorite newest dinosaur figures. This is the Ragasaurus. This figure also has a chomping action when you press down on the legs and you can adjust its arms, its legs, and even twist its tail around a little bit. I love this dinosaur's head. You've got the horn right at the top and you've got this really cool smaller spine right on its neck, these spikes. It's really cool. Here we have another very well-known apex predator. This is a Velociraptor. This specific one is actually Velociraptor Charlie from the Amber Collection. So this figure is very adjustable. It can move all the different parts of its arms and legs and you can adjust its head quite a bit as well too. And it's even got this headpiece right behind its face too. This is another ginormous T-Rex, and this T-Rex is pretty adjustable as well. As you can see, you can move the arms up and down, you can adjust the leg position, and instead of moving the neck and face up here, you actually can control it with the tail by swiveling it. This is another Velociraptor from the Amber Collection. This one is Velociraptor Echo. This Velociraptor has the light brown coloring as well as the dark black right on top. And just like the other Amber Collection Velociraptor, it is very adjustable on all different parts of its body. You can even move the claws on its feet up and down. Back over here, we've got a smaller Indominus Rex figure. This is an older Jurassic World figure. It's got the battle damage on the side that you can open and close. And this figure is fairly adjustable as well. You can move the legs a little bit, you can move the arms just a bit, and the tail controls the mouth and the neck too. We've got a few more awesome looking Baryonyxes in here. This first one has a slide action for different roaring sound effects. And this Baryonyx doesn't have any buttons on it, but you can use the tail to move the head around. Right over here is a well-known predator from Jurassic World. Once again, it isn't a real dinosaur, but I can guarantee this would be an apex predator. This is the Scorpios Rex. This figure has two action buttons on its back, one for the mouth, and one for the claws. And the rest of the figure is pretty adjustable too. You can move the legs quite a bit and you can adjust the neck to have it look around. And the tail is spring loaded too. So you can fling the tail back and forth with those poisonous quills. Back here is a huge water dinosaur that I'm sure you recognize from the first Jurassic World movie. This is the Mosasaurus. This figure is ginormous. It's got a dark blue body on the top and then a white underbelly. And all over its body, you can actually see these like white specks, a little bit of detailing. And there's a few things that you can move on this figure. You can move the fins around, you can swivel the tail back and forth, and you can open and close the jaw, which is a pretty big jaw, I'd say. Probably fit a few small dinosaurs in there. Ah, here's another popular apex predator. This is the Spinosaurus. Did you know that the Spinosaurus is the largest known carnivorous dinosaur that existed? These were even bigger than T-Rexes. This figure has an adjustable tail. The legs are pretty movable, as well as the ankles. You can move the arms up and down, and you can actually adjust the neck quite a bit as well too. Here is another awesome T-Rex Predator. This looks to be very similar as the first T-Rex that I unboxed in this video, but with different coloring. See, it's got the brown body and the darker brown on top. And just like the other T-Rex, adjustable tail, move the legs and the arms, and you can move the head around too. Here's another dinosaur from the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. This is a Quetzalcoatlus. I didn't really know how big these dinosaurs were until I saw them in the new Jurassic World movie. These things were huge and they took down that plane. This is a Ceratosaurus. I think we actually have another one with different coloring. This one is a dark green color with black detailing on the top. And this one is a light gray 
with red and a darker gray detailing on the top as well. And they both have that slide action button for different sound effects and different roars. I think the sound effects are the same though. This one's an interesting looking dinosaur. This is a Cryolophosaurus. Look at that interesting crowning on the top of its head. This Cryolophosaurus has a dark blue body with white, red, and bright orange detailing. And you can move the arms, you can move the legs, and you can use the tail to move the head around. Here is another mighty Carnotaurus, the red side and the dark, it's almost like a purple color on the top. This dinosaur has an adjustable tail and adjustable legs and arms, and there's a button on the top for the chomping action. Ah, here's a species I don't think we've seen in this collection yet. This is an Allosaurus. It's got the dark green body with the red and white detailing. See, it's got those spikes right along its spines up top. And you can adjust the arms and the legs and the tail. And it's got the slide action button for different roars and chomps. This bright red dinosaur is a Metriacanthosaurus. It's a pretty interesting looking one. It's smaller than most of the other figures. It's got the bright orange detailing on the top of its head and the action button on its back for chomping. Next up, we've got, I believe, a Majungasaurus. This is a super colorful dinosaur. It's got the dark green, yellow, and blue on its neck. It's got those teal eyes. And like many of the other dinosaur figures, you can use the tail to move the head and neck around. This is an Albertosaurus with the Battle Damage Edition. As you can see, it's got two different types of battle damage. One that's right there on the top of the plastic and one that you can actually open up. This has the stomach and ribs that you can close down and then the skin that you can do to cover all of the battle damage. That's pretty cool. The rest of the figure is pretty adjustable too. You can move the legs, arms, and tail as well as the neck and you can open and close the mouth manually. Over here is the Carcharodontosaurus with a blue body and orange and brown detailing. Look at all those spikes right along its spine too. It's interesting how they're all different heights. With this figure, you can move the arms, legs, and tail, and there's an action button on top for chomping. Here is another Allosaurus with different coloring and different actions too. Check out those spikes right along its spine. You can see the two action buttons right here, one for the mouth, and one for the arms. And I think we actually have one more Allosaurus in here with different coloring. This one is gray with yellow detailing. You can only move the arms and legs in this figure aside from the action button on its back that controls its mouth. Right over here is another Albertosaurus. This figure is about medium sized and it does not have any battle damage like the one we saw earlier but it's still pretty adjustable. You can move the arms, the legs, and you can use the tail to control the face. Here is another Carnotaurus. This one is a newer figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. As you can see, it's got the broken horn in the front, and this figure is smaller, but pretty adjustable. You can move the legs, the arms, twist the tail, and you can move the head and jaw around too. Here are a few small Dilophosaurus figures. This first one is mostly gray with red detailing and an action button on the tail that activates the frills. The second one is a bit more brightly colored. It has a green body and two different tones of orange, as well as the action button to activate the frills. And last but not least, we've got a bunch of smaller Velociraptor figures. Oh, actually. This is another baby T-Rex, just like we saw at the beginning of the video. But the rest of these figures are all Velociraptors. So let's check them out one by one. First, we've got the tan and brown Velociraptor. This one has a slashing action, spring-loaded torso, so it swings back and forth. This Velociraptor has a brown and yellow body with battle damage that you can open and close on the side. This next Velociraptor has a red and dark purple body, and you can move the arms, legs, and tail, as well as the mouth, but there's no special features on this figure. 
And these last two figures are similar in movement, but with different coloring. It's got the blue body with the yellow and gold coloring. This one has a dark brown color with orange on the top. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today, we are checking out my collection of Jurassic World Predators versus herbivores. Let's get started with these brand new ones that I just bought. Here is a huge one. This is the Isla Sorna capture pack. Let's go ahead and open it up. All right, here is our Jurassic World Jeep and the Parasaurophilus. With this Jeep, there's actually a button you can press that shoots out the seat. And then you can see that there's a missile that it shoots too, just like this. That's super cool. This is a super awesome dino hunting playset. Really cool. All right, up next, we've got a Jurassic World Legacy Collection Velociraptor. Let's get this out of the box. All right, so here is the brand new Velociraptor. I don't think I actually have a Velociraptor with this type of coloring. Plus, this Velociraptor has a slashing action with its torso. Look at that spinning motion. That is so cool, it's spring-loaded so it bounces back and forth. That is really awesome. All right, up next, we've got the Pachycephalosaurus. I love the coloring on this one. It's got that dark blue with the gray. Let's get this out of the box. This is a super cool herbivore. You definitely don't want to get headbutted by this dinosaur. Check out this action move. Spring-loaded head. That is so awesome. And right back here, we've got the Cosmoceratops. That is so interesting. Look at all the horns all over this one's body. Let's get it out of the box. Wow, I love the way this dinosaur looks. It looks like it's wearing a crown almost. And look at the horns on the side too. And this dinosaur has an action as well. Check that out. When you wiggle the tail, the head goes up and down. How cool is that? All right, I know you've been looking at this one. This is a giant Velociraptor. Look how big this figure is. It's probably, oh, I don't know, maybe three feet from tail to head. And it's actually pretty heavy too. This dinosaur has a stomach compartment right here. So you can actually feed this dinosaur littler dinosaurs or whatever you want. And it'll go down the throat all the way into the stomach where you can open it up and get those toys out again. That is so awesome. And look at the size of these claws too. Right in the back here, we've got the great Tyrannosaurus Rex. Look at the size of this dinosaur. Look at the size of its body. That is a huge neck and face. And of course, there's the action button for roaring. That is so cool. There's so many teeth in its mouth. And of course, you can wiggle the tail and it'll move its head back and forth. Up next, with a super long neck, we've got the awesome Brachiosaurus. Look at that interesting bump on its head right there. That is so cool. This figure doesn't have any movable parts, but it is super realistic with its coloring and its texture. That is so cool. And one of the next huge dinosaurs in this haul, the great Indominus Rex with battle damage. Look at all those teeth and the awesome battle damage on the side that you can turn on and turn off. Right up here, we've got a Stegosaurus with a gray-blue coloring. Look at that tail swiping action. That is so cool. And you can adjust the head too. Here's one of my favorite dinosaurs, the Carnotaurus. That is super awesome. It's got a little battle damage on its head. And with the tail, you can move the head.
here's what I think is one of the scariest predators in Jurassic World. This is the Scorpios Rex. It's got loads of teeth in its mouth, super sharp claws, and look at this poisonous tail. Those quills on its tail are poisonous, so you better watch out for those. Here is a super bright dinosaur. This is a predator. It is the Suchomimus. Look at that long mouth with all those teeth. Kind of like an alligator, really. And look at that fin all along its back right there. Right over here is an herbivore. This is the Ankylosaurus. And look at all that armor plating. Here is a scary looking predator. Look at that red all along its neck. This is the Carcharodontosaurus. This is a super cool looking dinosaur. See all those spikes along its back? That is super awesome. Right over here, this predator looks kind of like an alligator too. This is the Sarcosagus with all those teeth in its mouth and this red scaling all along its back and then the green bottom. All right, we've got a bunch more predators and herbivores in here. These two are both Carcharodontosauruses and look at the difference in coloring too. I think this one's my favorite because I love this orange right along the top of its body. But these are both super cool dinosaurs. Right over here, we've got another herbivore. And look at the horns on this. It kind of reminds me of the horns of a bull, kind of. This is a Nasudoceratops. And it's got an action button in the back. It can whip its tail back and forth. That is super awesome. And it's got a button on the top for swinging its horns around too. Watch out for those horns. All right, let's keep digging. Ooh, this is an interesting looking herbivore. This is a Calivosaurus. I love the coloring on this. Got the yellow on the top and the dark blue on the sides. And you can move the head up and down and the tail and all the legs too. Uh-oh, better watch out. Here's another predator. It's the Baryonyx. This is super cool. Check out that chomping action. Here is another herbivore. This is a very uniquely colored dinosaur. This is a Zuniceratops, and it kind of reminds me of a Triceratops, you know? See those two horns in the front right there? That is super cool. We've got some smaller herbivores in here. Let's check these out. Wow, these are all so different from each other. This is a Chialingosaurus. And look at those spikes on its shoulder too. How interesting is that? This little one right here is a Protoceratops. It looks very small and it might be a young Protoceratops, but it is super cool. This orange dinosaur is a Gallimimus. Look at that long neck and the long tail. I bet these dinosaurs ran really fast. And this little dinosaur is a Triceratops. See, got the three horns on its head right there. But wait, we've got some more predators in here. Look out, it's the Endoraptor. One of the sneakiest and smartest dinosaurs out there. Let's check out these. This is a baby Brachiosaurus. You can open and close its mouth and move its neck up and down. And this is another giant Stegosaurus. It's got that tail swinging action. Those spikes are super big. Wow, that is so neat. Here comes another predator. This is the Spinosaurus that huge spine along its back, and then all those teeth right up front. All right, we've got a few more dinosaurs in here. This huge dinosaur figure is a Pentaceratops. And check out these action buttons. 
Those are some massive horns on its head. Right back here, we've got another Parasaurophilus. And this is an older one. This is actually from Jurassic Park. And it's got a running action too. How cool is that? Super cool. We've got just a few dinosaurs left. This dinosaur is called a Cynoceratops. And look at the size of that one horn on its head in the very front. That is humongous. All right, here's another predator. This is a bright red and green Velociraptor with jumping action. Check that out. Here he goes, ready and go. All right, these are our final three dinosaurs of the Predator versus Herbivore collection. This is a Styracosaurus. And look at all those horns, that is super cool. This interesting looking one is a Shringosaurus. Look at those huge horns right on the top of its head and a super long neck. How interesting is that? And our final dinosaur of the bin is the mighty Kentrosaurus with those huge spikes on its side. And if you pull this lever right here, it swings its spikes back and forth. Today we're checking out a collection of Jurassic World figures with the coolest special features. Some of them have extreme battle damage, some of them have really cool attacks, and a whole lot more. Let's start it off with this gigantic Giganotosaurus figure. This is one of the largest Giganotosauruses that I currently have, and this figure has some really cool attack features. First is with this button on the top that swings its entire torso back and forth. There's also a button on the bottom of its tail to activate just the jaw by itself. Next, this T-Rex has one of my favorite special features. It actually can break free from its cage that's around its face. By pressing the button on its back, it breaks free and roars at the same time. That is super cool. This dinosaur is our first extreme battle damage dinosaur. This is an Allosaurus and it is part of the Jurassic World Dominion series. You can check out that huge battle damage on the side that you can open up to reveal what's underneath and close it up all the way as well. This is a really cool and huge figure. Next, we've got a really interesting T-Rex figure right here. This one is all disassembled. You can see all the insides of this Tyrannosaurus Rex. You can see the muscle of its tail, you can see the intestines, and you can actually lift it up to show even more underneath. Plus, you can actually reassemble it so it looks like a normal T-Rex. I think the legs and the tail are in this bin somewhere, so we'll probably see them in a little bit. Let's check out this other giant T-Rex figure right here. This is camouflage custom colored. And I really like this figure because of the attack features. You can use its tail for a chomping action, chomps downward, or you can lift the tail down and it lifts its head up for a roar. That is super cool and I think these features make it look really lifelike. Next up, we've got the extreme battle damage Indominus Rex. And it looks like he's chomping on a little Spinosaurus figure. That's pretty cool. But let's check out that extreme battle damage on the side. You can turn it on and turn it off just with the click of a button. Plus there's a button on its tail for chomping and roaring. This Indominus Rex's arms are huge as well. And check out the size of those claws. Over here, we've got an Albertosaurus figure with extreme battle damage on the side. Plus it's got some on its skin as well. And just like the Allosaurus that we saw earlier, you can flip down the rib cage. You can see the stomach underneath, or you can close it all completely and hide the battle damage entirely. Next up, we've got a Scorpios Rex figure, and this has some really cool attack features. The first button on its back activates the jaw with sound effects, which is pretty cool, but it also has a second button 
for the claw slashing action, which I think is really cool. And that's not all. The tail is actually spring loaded, so you can swing it back and forth to hit other dinosaurs with that poisonous quills. The next special featured dinosaur is this giant Pentaceratops figure. And just like the T-Rex that we saw earlier, it can break free from its cage by pressing a button on its back. Let's check that out. Ready, three, two, one, go! Wow, that is so cool. And there's also a second button to swivel its torso back and forth too. Up next, I've actually just bought this new one to show in this video. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Extreme Damage Atrociraptor. I have quite a few other dinosaurs from this series, so I'm super excited to add a new Atrociraptor to them. So let's check out this battle damage on the side. Check that out. You can reveal it just by the click of a button, and it shows on both sides. Next, we've got another giant T-Rex figure with extreme battle damage on both sides, just like the Atrociraptor that we just saw. You can click it on and off. It's really cool, plus the rest of its body is fully poseable. You can even open its mouth all the way for a giant roar. Up next, we've got an unusual looking dinosaur. This is an Ampelosaurus, and this one has a pretty cool moving feature that's really lifelike, I think. You can use its tail to move its neck around to look in all different directions, plus there's a button to even open and close its jaw, too. So this feature gives this dinosaur some super lifelike movements. Next, we've got a giant Endoraptor figure. This figure has the classic coloring for an Endoraptor. You can use the tail to move the neck and the head around, and even some of the torso, too. And there's two buttons on its tail. The first one moves its arms, and the second button at the bottom of its tail opens and closes its jaw. So you can use all three of these all together to make it look really lifelike. Here is a new Sinoceratops from the Jurassic World Dominion movie. This dinosaur has some really cool coloring, but the special feature is when you press down on its body, it lifts its head up, and it has a ton of sound effects too. Right over here, we've got the Jurassic World Dominion Extreme Battle Damage T-Rex. So this figure is similar to the T-Rex that we saw earlier with the battle damage on its side that you can turn on and off on both sides, but it has entirely different coloring. It's a lot more orange and it has some gray on the top as well. <laughs> Next, looks like we've got a Pteranodon figure. This figure is ginormous. It's probably a foot from wingtip to wingtip and it has two special feature buttons on its back. As you can hear, the first one activates the sound effects and also flaps its wings. And the second button in the front activates its jaw and more sound effects too. I really like how big this figure is, plus you can get some real lifelike wing flapping too. Over here, we've got another Pteranodon figure, but this one is actually from the Hammond collection. And the special feature of this dinosaur is that it is a soft rubbery texture as opposed to a hard plastic like many of the figures. So this figure is really poseable, especially because of that rubber feeling that makes it feel like a real wing would. All right, here are our missing T-Rex parts. So let's actually go ahead and put them on to our T-Rex right here. All right, well, it looks like I'm missing a few pieces here still, but you eventually would be able to reassemble it to make it look entirely like a healthy T-Rex. Next up, we've got the Aranosaurus figure. And the special feature on this dinosaur is this slide lever action that moves its neck and gives a ton of different sound effects. Up next, I've got a little baby Triceratops with the battle damage that you can open and close on the side. Here's also a small Herrerasaurus figure with that same opening and closing battle damage on the side. This, I think, is the first Velociraptor of this bin, and the special feature on this dinosaur is the side-to-side -side slashing action. It is spring-loaded, so you can twist it and it swings way back and forth. Here's another Herrerasaurus figure, but this figure does not have battle damage, but rather you can use the tail to open and close the mouth. And for how small the figure is, that's a pretty cool feature. And here we've got another Velociraptor figure, but this one has the extreme battle damage on the side that you can turn on and off. And it shows up on both sides too.
Today, I'm gonna to be showing you my collection of Stegosaurus, Dilophosaurus, and Baryonyx figures, and putting them up on this empty space on my shelf. I've even got a brand new set to unbox, but first of all, I wanna show you something I've never shown before. This is a vintage Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus statue. It's got a huge frill, and it's even got some plants at the base of it, too. This is really cool, super old, and I'm gonna put this right here on this top shelf. Let's go ahead and dig into the rest of my Dilophosaurus figures. This first one is the basic red Dilophosaurus. You can actually open and close the frills and it's got a huge yellow crown on the top of its head. So let's put this Dilophosaurus right over here on the Dilophosaurus shelf. Next up, I've got another basic but giant Dilophosaurus figure. This one is the teal green blue coloring with the bright red frills in the front and the bright red crown on the very top. Let's go ahead and put this next to my other giant basic Dilophosaurus figure. It's looking good already. Let's see what other Dilophosaurus figures I have in here. This one is another vintage figure. This is a Dilophosaurus without the frills, which I think is pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and set this one down on the shelf as well. Right over here, we've got a miniature Dilophosaurus figure with bright yellow and red frills, and it's got the green body as well. That's really cool. It's pretty small, but you can still open and close the frills too. And let's set this down right next to the other one. Next up is a gray Dilophosaurus with red and white on its frills. And this Dilophosaurus actually has an action that when you pull up on the tail, it'll open its mouth and open its frills too. Let's go ahead and set down this Dilophosaurus too. Next up is a bright purple Dilophosaurus with red, yellow, orange all over its frills and some red on its body as well. This figure is a little bit bigger, but it doesn't have any action buttons to activate the jaws or the frills. Let's see if we can fit this Dilophosaurus right in between the two large ones. Perfect. Right over here, we've got a green, orange, and yellow Dilophosaurus, and this one actually has the lever action that'll open its mouth and its frills. Look how fast that is too, that's really cool. Let's set this Dilophosaurus down right on the end here. Two more Dilophosauruses to go. Here is a dark green and black one, and it's got super bright red on its frills. And this figure is actually one of the new Jurassic World Dominion Dilophosauruses. So this is probably one of my most recent Dilophosaurus figures. And our last Dilophosaurus is another mini green Dilophosaurus, but this one has brown on its back, and it's got red and yellow on its frills too. This is looking great so far. All right, let's move on to the Stegosauruses. But first, let's actually open up this brand new Jurassic World set. This is the Dr. Sarah Harding and Stegosaurus pack. And the box is even designed to look like a truck, which is really cool. All right, so this set comes with three figures. It's first got the giant Stegosaurus figure with some pretty unique coloring. I don't have one with this coloring yet. It's also got a baby Stegosaurus right there. And of course, Dr. Sarah Harding on the side. Let's check out the giant Stegosaurus first. So it looks about the same as many of the other Stegosaurus figures, but it has this clay red coloring on the top and then the green on the sides and then a brown underbelly, which is really cool. And like many of the Stegosaurus figures, it has an action that when you press down here, it swings its tail back and forth. Next up is the baby Stegosaurus figure. It has similar coloring as the adult. It's got the green on the sides and the brown underbelly and the red on top, but is a whole lot smaller. And look at that, even the spikes on its tail are a lot smaller too. It's pretty cute. And here is Dr. Sarah Harding. She's even got a camera wrapped around her neck as well. It's pretty cool. Taking photos of the Stegosauruses. Bingo! Let's put Dr. Harding and the baby Stegosaurus right next to the Dilophosaurus figures. This is where our Stegosaurus domain will start. And let's put the adult Stegosaurus right next to them. Look how big this Stegosaurus is in comparison to this baby Stegosaurus. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's get the rest of these stegosauruses up here. This first one is a vintage Jurassic Park stegosaurus with a huge battle damage on its shoulder. And it's even got some similar coloring as to the stegosauruses that I just opened up as well. So why don't we put this one right next to that one? Moving right along, we've got a light blue and green Stegosaurus figure. It's got some pretty good detailing on its side. It's got the darker green on the top. And this figure also has the action that swings its tail back and forth. Well, it looks like we're out of room on this shelf, so why don't we move down to this other shelf that I cleared out to make space. Right here, we've got a dark gray blue Stegosaurus with a light pink underbelly. It's totally different coloring, but this figure also has that same action that when you press down on its back, it swings its tail back and forth. Two more Stegosauruses to go. Here is a green, brown, and tan Stegosaurus, and this one has a slightly different action. It still swings with its tail, but it actually swings its entire back torso, so it's different from the other Stegosaurus figures. So it's a pretty cool feature. Let's set this down right next to these other stegosauruses. And here is the final stegosaurus. It's got a light underbelly with brown on the sides and tan and green on the top. That is different from all the other ones that I have up here still. So let's set this one down right here at the end of the line. All right, that's all my stegosauruses. Now it's time for the final dinosaur, the Baryonyx figures. Let's start with this one right up front here, this is a battle damage Baryonyx with the brown and dark gray blue coloring on the top. Let's set this Baryonyx down right next to the Stegosauruses and the rest of this shelf will be for only the Baryonyxes. Let's see what we've got next. Here is another battle damage Baryonyx. This one is actually the same as this one. So we're gonna put it in the back right here. Next up, we've got a bright green and brown Baryonyx. And of course, it's got a button on its back to activate the jaw. Let's put this down right here on our Baryonyx shelf. Here is another Baryonyx figure, but this one has lighter green coloring and it has only one shade of brown on its head. Plus, this figure has a slide lever action to activate the jaw and sound effects. Let's put this figure down right next to our other green Baryonyx. We've got another dark green Baryonyx figure here. This one is, I think, the same as the first green Baryonyx. So we're just gonna put this down in the back here. Next up, we've got a gray, dark blue, and light blue Baryonyx with the slide lever action on its back. So you can get a ton of different sound effects. This is the first gray Baryonyx figure on the shelf, so we're gonna put it right up front here. Here is the Hammond Collection Baryonyx. So this one has a bit more detailing and a whole lot more points of articulation on its body. This one is super poseable. I really like this one, so why don't we put this on the front of the shelf as well? <laughs> And this is our final large Baryonyx of the bin. This one has some super bright blue reflective paint on the top of its head, which I think is a really cool detail. And let's set this big Baryonyx down in the back here. And our last two Baryonyxes of the bin are these vintage Jurassic Park Baryonyx figures. These ones are totally different from the new Baryonyx figures that Mattel is releasing now. Look how different in size they are, but I'm gonna place this one right up front here. And let's grab our other vintage Jurassic Park Baryonyx and place it down right in front next to the other old Jurassic Park Baryonyx. And that is it. My new shelf displays are complete. I've got the Dilophosauruses, Stegosauruses, and finally the Baryonyxes.
Welcome back. Today I've got a ton of Allosauruses, Carnotauruses, and Spinosauruses. And I'm going to be putting them all up on this empty space on my display shelves. Let's start with this big old custom colored Spinosaurus figure. This figure was custom painted a long time ago and has a ton more detail than a lot of the other Spinosaurus figures and is one of my favorites because of that color coding. Let's grab some of these other Spinosauruses. This is the Camp Cretaceous Spinosaurus with the tan and the red spine and red face. Why don't we put that one right next to the custom colored one, right over here. And here's another giant Spinosaurus figure. I believe this one is the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus. So it's got different coloring than the Camp Cretaceous dinosaur but it has the same red spine and the red face as well. And look at the color difference with their eyes. Next up, I actually just bought another custom colored Spinosaurus. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. All right, so this is a Hammond Collection Spinosaurus that has been custom colored by someone that I purchased from on eBay. It's still got the red spine, but it's got some cool blue coloring. It's got red along its back. It's got a bunch of white, pretty good detailing. This is really cool. And it's got some darker green eyes as well. So let's put this right in front of these bigger Spinosaurus figures. All right, let's dig into some of these Carnotaurus figures. This first one is one of the darker versions. So it's a brown with black spots on its back. And of course, it's got the action button on its tail to open and close its mouth with sound effects too. So let's put this right here next to our Spinosaurus figures. And let's go ahead and grab some of these other Carnotaurus figures too. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Sound Surge Carnotaurus figure. There's a button right at the top that you can use to activate the sound effects. And you can see by putting them side by side the color difference between the two. This one is a lot brighter. And I've even got some more brighter ones in here too. This Carnotaurus is one of my brightest Carnotauruses. It's got a bright yellow and then it fades into the brown on the top. And just like the Carnotaurus on the far right, it also has the button on its tail for the chomping and you can use its tail to move its head around too. I've still got quite a few Carnotaurus figures in here. This one is a darker red with almost purplish coloring along the top. And it's a bit smaller than these large Carnotaurus figures right here. Just a little bit smaller and it has a different action. There's a button right at the top of its back for chomping its neck back and forth. It's a little stuck though. Let's see here. I think I've got some more Spinosaurus figures in here. This one is not made by Mattel. It's a model Spinosaurus. So it's got some pretty cool different coloring, but unfortunately you can't move any of the body parts. Let's see if we got a little bit more room up here. We might have to move the Carnotauruses over. Let's see if we can set this Spinosaurus down. Way down here is another Spinosaurus figure, another model, but with entirely different coloring. It's got the red spine, like many of these Spinosaurus figures, but it's got a much darker body. Let's set this down. I think we're gonna have to move the Carnotauruses, so I'm just gonna put this one here for now and move the Carnotauruses down to the next level. Let's see what else. Let's start with the Allosauruses. This is my biggest Allosaurus figure, and it is the extreme battle damage version from Jurassic World Dominion. Let's set this down on the far corner of the lower shelf. I've got my Carnotauruses already set up over here and the Spinosauruses on the next level. Let's go ahead and grab another Allosaurus figure. I've got a gray and yellow one, a whole lot smaller than this Jurassic World Dominion figure but still pretty cool. It has an action on its back for snapping the jaw. And moving right along, let's grab this Spinosaurus figure. This is an old one, a Jurassic Park Spinosaurus. So it looks way different compared to these new ones over here. Let's go ahead and set it down next to these model Spinosauruses. Right over here, we've got another Allosaurus figure. This one has the tan and two-toned blue coloring. It's got two actions on its back, one for clamping the jaw, and one for swinging the arms. Set this down right next to the gray and yellow Allosaurus. Let's see, all right, another Carnotaurus figure. This is a model Carnotaurus figure. It's got some really cool coloring patterns and it's got a bright orange face, which is unlike any of the Mattel figures. Let's put this Carnotaurus much smaller down right there. Here's another small Carnotaurus, but this one is made by Mattel. This is actually from Jurassic World Dominion. So it's got different coloring compared to the rest of the older Carnotaurus figures, 
and it's also got a broken horn. Right over here, we've got another old Jurassic Park figure, but this one is an Allosaurus figure. This one actually has battle damage that you can take on and off its body. It's really cool how you can remove them completely. Let's put this down right next to the other Allosaurus figures. Oh, you know what? I've got this huge Carnotaurus figure right here. This is the super colossal Carnotaurus Toro figure. It is ginormous, and you can actually feed it smaller dinosaurs that'll go into its stomach compartment. I think this dinosaur will have to go on the very top shelf. That's the only place that has space, I think. Check it out, super tall. Here is another Spinosaurus figure. This one has the same coloring as the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus, but is a lot smaller, and it's actually the basic version because you can't open and close its mouth. Looks like we've got some more model Carnotaurus figures. This one has some really cool spikes all along its back and some really interesting coloring as well. Let's set this down right in front of these larger Mattel Carnotauruses. Ooh, check out this Spinosaurus figure. This one is actually posed as if it's swimming through the water, which, if you know, Spinosaurus actually did hunt in the water. So this is pretty cool. Let's put this at the end. Looks like we got a little more space for a few more Spinosaurus figures. This Allosaurus figure is pretty recent. I believe it is a Camp Cretaceous Allosaurus and has the slide lever action for roaring and for moving the mouth. Well, it looks like we're running out of room on the lower shelf. Hopefully we have enough space for the rest of the Allosauruses and Carnotauruses. Here's another model Carnotaurus figure. This one is like a green yellow coloring. It still has some red detailing along the top and it is in this really cool roaring pose. This might be the smallest Carnotaurus figure that I have on my shelf so far. Next up is another big old Allosaurus figure. I believe this one has pretty similar coloring to the Extreme Battle Damage Allosaurus, but it has a slide lever action on its back for a bunch of different roars and chomping actions. I think we have enough space for one more Allosaurus right there, perfect. Looks like we've got a juvenile Spinosaurus model figure right here. This one is by Papo. It's got some pretty cool detailing and coloring. You can still see some green along its spine right there. It's really cool. And let's put this at the top shelf along with all the other Spinosaurus figures. Here's some figures that I don't show too often on the channel. This is a Snap Squad Spinosaurus by Jurassic World. It's a little itty bitty figure and it actually has a spring-loaded mouth so you can clamp it onto stuff. But I just want to stand it up right here so it's right next to the, all the other figures. Here's another Snap Squad figure, but this one is actually a Carnotaurus, and you can see that even this one has the battle damage right on the front of its face, too. All right, looks like there's a little bit of space left. Let's see if we can stand this one up. There we go. And the remaining biggest figure is another Carnotaurus, but this one is gray and it's almost like a gray-blue coloring. It's got some red right there on its neck and some interesting bumps and texturing all over its body. <laughs> all right, let's see where we can set this down. Maybe right here in the corner. All right, all that's left are these teeny tiny figures. These are both Spinosaurus figures from Jurassic World, and they are really small, but they have different coloring, which is pretty cool. We've got this gray and green one, as well as this brown and black Spinosaurus. And the final figure for this shelf build is this Carnotaurus figure from Jurassic World. And I think this actually came from McDonald's, so it was part of a Happy Meal or something. But it is officially part of Jurassic World. So let's put this down next to all the other Carnotaurus figures. Whoops, knocked over a few. <laughs> Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out a huge collection of Tyrannosaurus Rex versus Indominus Rex. First up, we've got the Jurassic World Dominion Super Colossal T-Rex. This figure has a dark brown side and black top with a lighter underbelly. 
And it's got adjustable arms, legs, and a tail. And up front, I can tell that the plastic is a bit softer on its neck. The rest of its head is a hard plastic, and you can open it up way wide, and you're able to actually swallow smaller dinosaurs down to the stomach compartment. That's pretty cool. Next up, we've got another super colossal figure. This is an Indominus Rex. It has the classic light gray body and is pretty detailed with all the spikes and the spines. It's got some spines up there. It's got some behind its elbows. It's got those super long claws on its hand. And just like the T-Rex, you can adjust the arms, the legs, you can swing the tail around. But on this figure, you can also twist the neck too. Here is the next figure. It's another super colossal Tyrannosaurus Rex. This one has the light orange body with the lighter underbelly. And just like the Jurassic World Dominion Tyrannosaurus Rex, the neck is actually a little bit softer. It's like a softer plastic right there. And you can move the arms, the legs, the tail, just like the other ones. And of course, this one has the stomach compartment for eating smaller dinosaurs. And we've got some brand new figures that we can open up first before we dive into the rest of them. This one is the PNSO Wilson the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure is super detailed. Look at all that texturing on its body, all the various shades of colors. It's like lighter right here, there's darker shades. These are a lot more detailed than a lot of the Jurassic World figurines. But unfortunately, they're not as poseable. Usually you can only move their jaw. All right, let's dig in. This first Tyrannosaurus Rex is the Battle Damage Edition. It has the light orange body. You can see that there's scrapes and slashes all over its body, even on its face and nose. And it has a fully poseable body, plus the button at the top of the head for chomping. Over here, we've got an Indominus Rex, the Extreme Battle Damage Edition. With this one, you can actually turn the battle damage on and off. That's so cool. Each time that you press that button, it delivers a roar sound effect too. On the rest of the figure, the arms and the legs are fully adjustable. And there's a button at the tail that controls the jaw. Here we've got the epic Roarin' Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure is light brown on the sides, dark brown on top, and the lighter underbelly. And the coolest part is the roar and shaking sound effects. Over here is the Jurassic World Chompin' Indominus Rex. This is a bit of an older figure. It's got the hard plastic on the back and the rubber on the neck and head. You don't see that too often nowadays. And for the chomping action, you pull down on the arms to open and close its mouth. I believe this figure is the Bite and Fight Tyrannosaurus Rex. As you can tell by the name, it has one big special feature. Press this button on its back and it does a tearing action. Swings its head around and closes its mouth real fast. And there is also a secondary button that swings its tail back and forth. I believe this figure is the Destroy and Devour Indominus Rex, but you'll notice that it has some custom coloring. So, this definitely does not look like your typical Indominus Rex. And this figure really pops out on my display shelves. My favorite part being those green eyes right there. Next up is the Stomp and Escape Tyrannosaurus Rex. As you can tell by the name, it has two features. The first, when you press this button on its back, it'll escape from its face cage. Just like that. And the second feature is stomping. When you twist the tail, it stomps its feet up and down. Comes with sound effects too. Here we have a classically colored destroy and devour Indominus Rex. This figure is pretty detailed over its body. It's got tons of spikes on its back. It's got those spines right along its neck. It's got some unique coloring along its eyes, right next to those orange eyes. And this figure has a few different features. First, when you bend the legs forward, it'll actually point its head down. And when you bend them back, it'll point its head upwards. 
Secondly, there's a button on its back that's used for slashing. And finally, there's a button on its tail for the chomping and roaring. Here is an extreme battle damage, Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure is pretty poseable. You're able to move the arms, the legs, and swing the tail around, as well as adjust the neck and open and shut the jaw by hand. But the coolest part is the battle damage that you can turn on and off, just like the Indominus Rex that we saw earlier. And you can see it on both sides. Next up, we've got the Extreme Chompin' Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure has a more gray-brown coloring on the sides with a darker brown on top and the light underbelly and is adjustable just like many of the other figures. And it has the button at the top of its head for chomping and roaring. Here is another Indominus Rex, but this does not look normal. This is a hybrid Indominus Rex. So this one has some pretty awesome and unique coloring along its body. It's the only Indominus Rex to have red on its body, I believe, as well as the gold on its arms and its belly. And this dinosaur has a few features. First is a hidden button that activates its spikes on its back. Secondly is the chopping action, which you activate by moving its arm. Here we have, I believe, another extreme chomping Tyrannosaurus Rex. This one, though, has the orange body with the brown coloring on the top with the lighter underbelly. And of course, that chomping button right on the top of its head. This is the Stomp and Chomp Tyrannosaurus Rex. It has the typical orange body with the brown top and lighter underbelly. And what I really like about this figure is that you use the tail to control the head and the whole front of the body for chomping and for roaring too. Here we've got a model Indominus Rex, which I don't see that many of. But what I like about these models is that they're so much more intricately colored and textured. Check out those spikes on its back. They're so small on all those little spines and all those little horn things right along its back all the way to its tail. And just like many other model figures, you can't adjust the arms and legs. Only the mouth can open and close in these. But these sure look epic on a display shelf. Next up is the Legacy Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is one of the few Tyrannosauruses that I have that are this cool green color with the black detailing on the top. It has that same button on the top of its head for chomping. And this T-Rex actually came with a baby T-Rex in the same pack. So these came together. Here is a smaller Indominus Rex figure with a battle damage on the side that you can open and close. And while most of its body is that iconic gray color, it does have some gray green coloring along the top, which is different from most of my other Indominus Rex figures. Plus this figure comes with a chomping action when you move the tail. Way at the bottom here, I've actually got the T-Rex anatomy kit. Now I am missing a few pieces to it. It's really easy to misplace these, but it's really cool that you can take this apart to check out all the different body parts within. You can take the ribs out, you can see this muscle on its tail and the bone behind it, and you can even take apart this foot right here and see what's underneath. How cool is that? This is the Bashers and Biters Indominus Rex figure. This is from the old Jurassic World toy line, and it has similar coloring to the rest of them, a little bit darker gray on top, got the battle damage on the side, and of course you can move the tail to control the face. This is a Tyrannosaurus Rex figure, but I believe it is a juvenile or even a baby T-Rex. You can see it's got the mouth restraint on, because the humans are actually healing its leg. It's got a broken leg, so it's got this bandage around it. And this figure is very adjustable too. You can move all the limbs, even at the elbows. And of course you can move the tail and twist the head around and even open and close the mouth. This is the Feeding Frenzy Indominus Rex. This is a lot smaller than most of the Indominus Rex figures, but it has quite a large face to it and it has a few features. The first is when you press this button on its nose, 
get some sound effects. And the second is when you move the tail, it opens its mouth to eat, and then you can press down on its tongue to clamp shut its jaw. And last of all, I've got a few small figures in here. Got a Lego Indominus Rex figure, which is pretty cool. It's the only Lego figure that I have in this bin, at least. We've also got some miniature Tyrannosaurus Rex figures from Jurassic World. This one is green with a light underbelly. And the second one here is brown with a light underbelly as well. And I also have these two Indominus Rexes in this bin. The first one is white with silver, reflective silver on its top. And you can open and close the jaw. And the second one is a clear Indominus Rex. You can't move any parts on this figure, but I think it's pretty cool that it's see-through. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we're checking out my collection of Jurassic World, Giganotosauruses, Allosauruses, and Ceratosaurus figures. Let's start it out with this Giganotus Strike and Roar figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This is one of the coolest Giganotosaurus figures that I have with the most features on it. The first and biggest feature of this figure is the button right on its back that swings its torso back and forth. It has like a chomping and a tearing action that comes with it. Then at the bottom of the tail, there is another button that operates just the jaw for chomping and roaring. So you can actually do both of the buttons at once. And it looks pretty cool. And here's something you actually don't see too often. The tail is actually double jointed, so you can get a bit more bend in it. It looks a bit more realistic than having just one joint in it, which is pretty cool. And of course, you've got the big old DNA scanner right at the end of its tail too. Next, let's check out this ginormous Giganotosaurus figure. This is from the Super Colossal Collection, and it is also from Jurassic World Dominion. You can see it's got the same coloring as all of the Giganotosaurus figures, the dark green with the black striping and patterning. It's got the huge spikes along its spine, and this super colossal figure has a decent amount of detailing all over its body too. You can see that the texture of its belly is different from the texture of its side, and its face as well. It's got these huge ridges right above its eyes too. It's pretty cool. Here is another Giganotosaurus figure. This one is the smallest. This is the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. Still got the same iconic coloring. It only has one joint in its tail, different from the first one that we saw. And its arms and legs are fully adjustable just like the other ones. But most importantly, here is the button for the sound effects that are the special feature of this figure. <laughs> This is a pretty small figure and it's okay with the detail. You'll see that there is no coloring inside the mouth. They didn't color the teeth or the tongue at all. So that's a bit of a bummer. But other than that, this is a pretty cool medium sized figure to have. All right, moving on to the Allosaurus figures and I've actually got a brand new Camp Cretaceous figure to unbox. Let's check it out. This is the Roar Attack Allosaurus from Camp Cretaceous. It's got the dark green body, kind of similar in color to a Giganotosaurus, but then it also has the white and red detailing along its neck all the way up to its head. And it's also got some dark red eyes as well. That's a nice touch. It makes it look a bit more scary. This figure is not as detailed in the texturing of the skin as the Giganotosaurus figures, but it's still got some cool spines along its back. You can see its ribs on the side and its arms, legs, and tail are adjustable. You can move them all around. And the biggest feature is the slide lever action on its back to get a series of different sound effects. This is pretty cool. I like these slide lever actions because for each button that you move it up, you get a different type of sound effect with it. Next up, we've got the Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous Roar Attack Allosaurus. This figure is dark brown along most of its body. It's got the dark blue detailing along its top. It's got some yellow eyes with a black pupil, which is different from the last one we saw. 
So this one looks a little bit less scary, I would say. And it has many of the same features as the Allosaurus that we just saw. You can move the arms and legs and tail, and it has the slide lever action for different sound effects. Plus, check out that blue tongue in its mouth. That is a pretty unique feature. I don't have that many dinosaurs that have a different colored tongue in its mouth. That's pretty cool. This Allosaurus is the Jurassic World Roarivores Allosaurus. These ones can be pretty hard to find now, I think. It's got the same detailing and texturing along its skin. You can see the ribs. This one does not have any spines on its back, which is pretty cool. It's got some yellow detailing all the way from its head, all the way down to its tail as well as a bit on its legs. You can adjust the arms and legs of this figure, but you can't move the tail around or the head. And there is one button on its back for the chomping and roaring. And check it out. This Allosaurus also has a dark blue tongue. How cool is that? Next up is the Jurassic World Dual Attack Allosaurus figure. This figure is also tan and blue, but a bit lighter tan, and it has two tones of blue on it, the darker blue in the back and the lighter blue along the neck and the head. And this one also has yellow eyes with a black pupil, It's pretty cool. And on this figure, you can adjust the arms, the legs, and you can twist the tail a little bit. And the special feature of this figure is, like the name says, the dual attack buttons. The first button on the top activates the jaw. Check it out, this Allosaurus has a blue tongue as well. I guess a lot of the Allosauruses have it, and I didn't realize it. And the second button on its back activates its arms for slashing. This is a Jurassic Park Allosaurus figure. This is one of the oldest figures that I have. And you can see that it's designed quite a bit differently from the new Jurassic World Allosaurus figures. It's got some green eyes, you can manually open and close the jaw. And the biggest feature of this dinosaur figure is that it has battle damage that you can completely take off to reveal the insides of the dinosaur. Look at that, you can even take out some of its ribs. And you can also remove a part of its leg to reveal the bone and muscle underneath and a bit on a tail as well to reveal the bone and muscle underneath there too. In the back here is the extreme battle damage Allosaurus figure from Jurassic World. This is a pretty new figure and it is one of my largest Allosaurus figures. It's got the classic tan and dark blue coloring, the tan along most of its body and its underbelly and the blue right along the top. And this figure has a bit more detailing and texturing than a lot of the smaller Allosaurus figures. It's got a ton more spikes along its spine as well that go all the way to its tail. That's pretty cool. You can see that it's got the DNA barcode scanner right at the top of its neck. And the coolest part is the battle damage that you can open and close. So you can hide it completely or you can click it open to reveal the ribs and you can even move the ribs out of the way to touch the stomach underneath. That's pretty cool. It's like a squishy soft rubber. And you can close it all the way back up. This Allosaurus figure is huge and it even comes with another action button right at the bottom of its back to activate its jaw. And the last Allosaurus figure is actually a duplicate of the one that I opened up earlier. This is the Roar Attack Allosaurus from Camp Cretaceous with the green body and the red and white detailing and the slide lever action for roaring and chomping. And last of all are our Ceratosaurus figures. And I've even got the brand new Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus figure to open up. Let's check out this new figure from Jurassic World. Like many of the Hammond Collection figures, this dinosaur is very adjustable on all of its limbs. You can move its knees, you can move its elbows, its arms, you can twist its neck around. So this thing is fully poseable, which is really cool. Overall, the coloring is pretty decent. It's pretty similar to the other Ceratosaurus figures that we'll see in a second. It's got the red on the top with the tan and the brown striping and it's got a decent amount of detailing and texturing as well. It's got some yellow eyes and that iconic horn at the top of its head, and you can manually open and close its mouth. This next Ceratosaurus, I believe, is the Camp Cretaceous Roar Attack figure. It's got a gray body with some brown detailing, and of course the iconic red along its back all the way up to its head. On this figure, you can move its arms a little bit, and you can move its legs, 
and twist the tail. And there's one button on its back to activate the jaw for chomping and roaring. Next up, this Ceratosaurus, I believe, is from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. It's got some pretty similar coloring compared to the Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus that I just opened up. It's got the tan body with some black striping and red detailing all the way from its tail up to its head. And like the other figure, you can move its arms a little bit, you can move its legs, and you can twist the tail, and it has that one action button on its back to activate the jaw for chomping and roaring. The next Ceratosaurus figure, I believe, is from Camp Cretaceous. It's got the gray coloring along its underbelly and sides. It's got some dark gray detailing all the way up to its head. And of course, the bright red from the back all the way to the face. This figure is actually pretty similar to this one that we saw earlier. This one is also Camp Cretaceous. It's got the same design and coloring with the red and the gray, but you'll notice that the brown detailing here is actually a dark gray detailing on this one. Plus, they have different actions. This one has one single action button on its back, and this one has a slide lever action for a bunch of different roar sound effects. This next Ceratosaurus figure is also from Camp Cretaceous. This is another roar attack figure. This has the slide lever action button on its back for the different roar sound effects. And you'll see that it's got entirely different coloring than many of the other Ceratosaurus figures that I have. It's dark green with only some black detailing along its back and its neck. And just like the other figures, you can slightly move its arms, you can move its legs, and on this one, you can actually swivel the tail around in all directions. And last of all, this is the Jurassic World Roarivores Ceratosaurus figure. It's got some pretty unique coloring with the dark brown along its body and some bright orange detailing along its back and neck and even a little bit on its legs as well. And you'll notice that its horn is also that bright orange color too. And this figure has the single button on its back to activate the chomping and the roaring. And you can move the legs and arms just a little bit as well as twist the tail. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.